Good morning and welcome back to NPTEL online certification course on Indian poetry in English. All of you must remember that presently we are dealing with diasporic poets, especially Indian. And in this regard, in the previous lecture, we had uh, discussed what diaspora is and what were the contributions of A.K. Ramanujan in diasporic poetry. Today we have a different poet named Aga Sahid Ali. We shall not only have a look at uh, the bio of Aga Sahid Ali, uh, but we shall also see through his poetry how he creates a new world, a new world of internationalism because Aga uh, Sahid Ali's uh, uh, life was completely different from other diasporic poets. So before we go, here is a look at his personal life or bio. Actually, Aga Sahid Ali was uh, born on February 4th, 1949 in Delhi and he was educated in Kashmir, fine. He actually uh, came from Kashmir and his father also was uh, uh, in, the, in the field of education. So, Aga Sahid Ali spent half of his life in Kashmir and the other life, other half in Delhi and later on he switched over to USA. Now, when we talk about Aga Sahid Ali, we can see uh, that in Delhi, he did his post graduation. Prior to that, he had already done his uh, uh, graduation uh, from uh, Kashmir, University of Kashmir and then he did his MA from Delhi University. Even during his student life, Aga Sahid Ali uh, was quite influenced uh, by the world of poetry and uh, drawn to poetry. He was actually very much uh, influenced by T.S. Eliot, the postmodern poet. And actually, uh, once he did his uh, MA, he left for Pennsylvania State Universities in order to do a uh, doctorate. And uh, you will be delighted to know uh, that he did his doctorate on none other than T.S. Eliot. And his dissertation uh, finally uh, was published in the form of a book. Aga Sahid Ali, of course, came back to India uh, for some time, uh, but then uh, he settled finally in USA. Being a Kashmiri, his heart was always uh, in Kashmir and he always frequented Kashmir. Aga Sahid Ali was a poet, translator, editor, academician and gajal composer. When we have a look at Aga Sahid Ali's life, we can find that the poetic influence which he had not only from T.S. Eliot, but also from one of the living legends of India, I mean a gajal singer, a gajal singer named Begum Akhtar. He, whenever he had time, he used to uh, see the performances of Begum Akhtar and he was very much influenced by Begum Akhtar. One thing that is very significant of Aga Sahid Ali are uh, that he was a trilingual and a tricultural. Since he came from Kashmir, naturally uh, he, he knew uh, that language and then in Delhi he also learned uh, Hindi and then English was already his subject. So, he owned three major world cultures, Hindu, Muslim, Western without any effort. I think these things came to him quite naturally. He was also awarded because of his uh, uh, poetry and his uh, poetic works. He was also awarded the Puskart Prize. Uh, which is uh, a very famous American literary prize. Ali had also the opportunity of uh, teaching uh, the MFA program for poets and writers at the University of Massachusetts Amherst, at the MFA writing seminars at uh, Bennington College as well as creative writing programs at the University of Utah, Baruch College, Warren Wilson College, Hamilton College and New York University. Uh, you will be surprised to know uh, that Aga Sahid Ali, uh, who was so much uh, influenced by Indian culture and especially of his uh, uh, mother's culture, uh, but then he actually uh, left uh, for his heavenly abode uh, in Northamptonshire, that is in USA, and that was in the year 2001. So, this is actually a, a brief uh, bio about him, 
as regards his poetry, Aga Sahid Ali blends various identities in one. You, we have already uh, learnt in the previous lecture that most of the diasporic uh, poets, they are actually uh, struggling in order to establish their own identity. They are straddling between several cultures and Aga was not an exception. Uh, so, there are several identities in one which is uh, Aga Sahid Ali and the identities were Kashmiri, Indian, American and of course, a diasporic poet. Actually, majority of his poems are soaked in exile, in pain, in death, a sense of loss, uprootedness and Kashmir seems to be the background of majority of his poems. We can say that he has left his heart at Kashmir. In some of the interviews and in some of the essays, he has also admitted this fact and he writes, it is large subject matter, the turmoil in Kashmir. Because you know, Aga Sahid Ali was uh, born in post-independent India and he had witnessed uh, the turmoil that Kashmir was going through and that is why the turmoil in Kashmir accompanies his largest aesthetic canvas so far. As he himself says, I wanted to honor the cruel luck of being given as one subject, the destruction of one's home. It had actually a very catastrophic effect on uh, the mind of Aga Sahid Ali and he says, by serving the language and not letting it become an aesthetic convenience. So, this uh, was uh, the uh, sense of loss that he carried and he carried it even when he used to be in US or in America. Uh, very quickly let us come to see uh, that a young man Aga Sahid Ali, uh, Aga Sahid Ali when he moved to uh, US, but even before that he had started writing poetry right from his student days. He had he has so many collections of poetry as a diasporic poet. Aga Sahid Ali's heart was steeped and soaked in poetry and poetry alone. It was Aga Sahid Ali who actually uh, introduced Gajal to Indian English poetry. So, his, his uh, list of works uh, contains Bone Sculpture which came out in 1972 and then as I have said earlier that he was very much influenced by Begum Akhtar. Uh, so, he had another collection in memory of Begum Akhtar that came in 1979, then came a walk through yellow pages and then came the half inch Himalayas. If you have a look at the titles of his collections, you can understand that in every uh, book, uh, there is an indication uh, of his sense of loss, of his uh, sense of the consciousness of his own identity, even though he in himself blended three cultures. Then came a nostalgic map of America, then a country without a post office. So, it symbolically says that what sort of time Kashmir and Kashmiris uh, were witnessing because there could not be the exchange of mails and the letters and all and uh, that is reflected in the collection a country without a uh, post office. Then came Rooms Are Never Finished, which was actually his last collection. Uh, he also had some other works since he was drawn to Gajal, he was also drawn to uh, Begum Akhtar, he was also drawn to Rasul and Bai, all these uh, Gajal singers. So, he translated Faiz Ahmad Faiz in 1992. He also edited uh, a, another uh, book that is Ravishing Disunities, Real Gajals in English. And the one that was published posthumously, uh, he calls it Call Me Ismail Tonight, a collection of English gajals. So, he says, I wake up in my dark room alone with sweats. Now, what actually are the themes of his poetry? As I have been saying that uh, the world of diaspora or the diasporic poetry actually comprises sense of loss, identity, death, uncertainty, straddling between two cultures. But in uh, Aga Sahid Ali's world, we find pain and suffering and uh, his uh, actually association with Kashmir. In Aga's uh, world, we find a centrality of loss, longing and death 
Of course, at times he also shows his proclivity towards the political concerns, uh, but majority of his concerns are associated with the memories of uh, family, ancestors and then he also tries to uh, bring close to uh, cultures, Isma Islamic and European tradition and then there is a mixture of personal, political, historical, cultural elements, language, landscape, history and myth also are the major themes in the world of Aga Sahid Ali. We shall uh, see actually it is uh, very difficult uh, to have a look at all of his works, uh, but then uh, we can take uh, uh, some streaks of the loss or the pain uh, that Aga witnessed and experienced from his early collections. Uh, so, the very first collection bone sculpture which came out in 1972, uh, this does not have any particular form, this does not have any particular style or influence, rather we can find the echoes of T. S. Eliot and W. H. Auden. T. S. Eliot he had done a PhD on it and then Ali's personal obsession with the memory, death, history and nostalgia that are also very uh, reminiscent of this book. Uh, the next book that came out in memory of Begum Akhtar that is also actually uh, full of nostalgia, uh, then his engagement uh, with uh, Gajal and then his experiences and then also we can find there are certain autobiographical elements which one can come across if one reads uh, some of the poems of uh, this collection in memory of Begum Akhtar. We can uh, take uh, some of uh, the lines uh, that he writes because you know he was very eager uh, to uh, have uh, the performance of uh, Begum Akhtar uh, and, and it is said that when Begum Akhtar uh, died in 1974, he actually uh, made it, uh, he ensured that he must go and, and see uh, the uh, funeral and that is why and, and those times were very hard times for him. He did not have even money, so uh, one of his friends actually uh, helped him uh, get a ticket in 400 rupees. But in one of his uh, poems, Snow on the Desert, what he says is actually true of his uh, reminiscences of uh, Begum Akhtar where he says, it was like this turning dark of fog, a moment when only a lost sea can be heard a time to recollect every shadow, everything the earth was losing, a time to think of everything the earth and I had lost. So, in the loss of uh, Begum Akhtar, uh, he felt that it was his loss as well, of all that I would lose, of all that I was losing. So, majority of Aga Sahid's uh, poems, they are actually soaked in loss, in pain, in death, in uh, frustrations at time. Uh, we can take uh, some of the beautiful uh, lines and the poems from uh, one of his uh, collections entitled The Half Inch Himalayas. Uh, now, if you look at the title, you can find that how even being in US, how he thinks Himalayas to be on his fingers and he, he calls it Half Inch Himalayas. This uh, collection also deals with the past change of homes uh, from India to US. Actually, uh, this uh, work has got four sections which deal with exile and loss. There are occasions of fantasies, of imaginations, uh, majority of the poems are uh, like dreams and uh, at places you can find eight or nine syllables in each line of the first couplet with four lines of equal length. There are uh, some poems where you can find three line stanzas. Actually, what Aga Sahid Ali had lost, I mean the lost childhood which actually cannot be regained, no? And, and then uh, this actually has been a universal theme, you know, very, very pet theme uh, with uh, other English poets as well, uh, namely uh, Wordsworth where you might have found in the Ode to Intimations of Immortality, where uh, there also we can find uh, uh, the loss of childhood. But here uh, in half inch Himalayas, we can find uh, the pangs, the pains, the sufferings of Aga Sahid Ali. What uh, he says uh, in uh, one of his poems uh, named uh, Houses, Houses, let us look at the lines. The man who buried his house in the sand and digs it up again each evening, learns to put it together quickly and just as quickly to take it apart 
my parents sleep like children in the dark. I am too far to hear them breathe. Let us look at the last line. I am too far to hear them breathe. So, majority of the time, uh, the poet in Aga Sahid Ali is actually in the past. And the past is a recurring theme in majority of his uh, poems. We can also take uh, some lines uh, from uh, the uh, Half Inch Himalayas, uh, one of the poems which is uh, one of my most favorite and one of the poems which can be your favorite also as well, where you can find how the poets longing for other Himalayas when he writes in one of the poems entitled Postcard from Kashmir. This is actually the title of uh, the poem and it has been taken from the Half Inch Himalayas. Uh, let us have a look at the lines uh, so that uh, you can also verify and justify what sort of loss the poet was carrying on his psyche. Kashmir shrinks into my mailbox, my home, a neat 4 by 6 inches. I always loved neatness. Now I hold the half inch Himalayas in my hand. So, the poet time and again goes back, goes back to the past and he says that now I hold the half inch Himalayas in my hand. This is home and this the closest I will ever be to home. When I return, the colors will not be so brilliant. The poet is actually uh, in the past, but at the same time, he is actually thinking of the uncertainties of future, where he thinks that the, the, by the time I return, the colors will not be so brilliant. The Jhelum's water so clean, so ultramarine, my love so ever exposed, and my memory and my memory will be a little out of focus in it. A giant negative, black and white still undeveloped. So, every now and then he wants to live in past and he wants to live in the memories of his time spent in Kashmir and that is why this poem, a uh, postcard from Kashmir. Actually, Aga Sahid Ali uh, while he, he many majority of his poems are drenched in despair, but then he is not confined only to it. When he got settled uh, in US especially, he could one, once upon a time he could find or he was told by somebody uh, that even uh, the poetess uh, Emily Dickinson had also mentioned Kashmir in her poems and you know he was also drowned very much to Emily Dickinson and then in one of his poems, he has uh, mentioned it and it is said uh, that while he was writing poetry every now and then or he was trying to introduce uh, the gazelle form uh, in English literature, uh, Kashmir always used to be at the back of his mind. We can take uh, uh, one very famous poem uh, entitled, Vacating an Apartment from the Half Inch Himalayas. Now, every now and then you can find a sort of displacement, a sort of dislocation, fine, a kind of poetry rather being marginal to the contemporary world, but being very much central to it. And then, uh, while he vacates an apartment, let us look at uh, the feeling, what he feels and what uh, we also as individuals can feel. Efficient as fate, each eye a stormtrooper. The cleaners wipe my smile with comet fingers and tear the plaster of my suicide note and tear the plaster of my suicide note. This is just like while you are going to disengage yourself, while you are going to disassociate yourself from something that is so cordial, that is so close to you. They learn everything from the walls eloquent tongues. No? So, here this uh, vacating an apartment is very symbolical, symbolical in the sense that while a man vacates and this, this vacating the apartment is like vacating one's country, vacating one's village, vacating one's town and he says even the walls can have tongues, they learn everything from the walls eloquent tongues. I mean the memory which is associated with the walls now quick as genocide. They powder my ghost for a cinnamon jar. They burn my posters, India and heaven in flames. 
white house my voice stains make everything new clean as death when the landlord brings new tenants even memory is a stranger now what a, what a sort of irony is this that when the landlord the master or the person who actually wants you to vacate no even even your own memory becomes a stranger the oman harum solid harum solid and then instructs her husband's eyes to clutch insurance policies when everything has been so uncertain of course the reference is to kashmir they ignore my love affair they ignore my love affair uh, with the furniture the corner table uh, that memorized my crossed out lines oh she is beautiful a hard nippled madonna the landlord gives them my autopsy they sign the lease the room is beating with bottled infants and i have stopped beating i am moving out holding tombstones in my hands now when we look at this poem we can find that it is not simply a vacating an apartment rather it is how a man actually feels his own memory being stranger when he is actually he has to evacuate when he has to leave and that is why so the reference here the woman her room solid with the future instructs her husband's eyes so when there was a chaos of course the chaos here refers to the chaos uh, that i mean the turmoil that was in kashmir and then he says the woman is actually worried about the future and then in her room meaning thereby the coming generation and then she instructs the husband's eyes to clutch insurance policies at least there should be something that could be a sort of security my dear friend so this is what aga sahid ali actually reflects in one poem after another so if we if we in a way if we can have an analysis of the majority of his poems we can find uh, that and and you know it is not only confined only to one locale rather when he was living in usa he also could find this this sense of loss in the part where he was living in the part where people also had this feeling we'll see in some of the some of the poems or the other so there is a sort of multiculturalism because as a diasporic poet you are not only confined only to uh, the reminiscences of your own past rather uh, around yourself also you can see the chaos the dividedness the uprootedness of other people living from other countries or whatsoever fusion of memory imagination and present fine agony of kashmir we have already seen uh if we take a comment by bruce king it would actually be very pertinent because what he says is ali looks backward to a supposedly unified culture and nation that he has lost and which tries to recapture in his imagination friendship and also verse he was actually so much close or he had such an affinity with kashmir uh, that he says that if there is paradise on earth it is this it is this it is this you can see the sort of assertion uh, that uh, the poet uh, repeats because the poet is not in a position to get rid of the painful memory of kashmir and its people if we come to a nostalgist's map of america we can find Uh, that this also is divided into four sections and all these sections uh, every section has got a uh, uh, different number of poems for example in the first section we have five poems then followed by uh, three in the second 13 in the third and eight poems in the fourth one here again there is a sense of loss nostalgia for what is not there what is already gone but then one thing that is uh, quite distinguishing or one thing that distinguishes uh, uh, aga sahid ali from other diasporic poets is that while he has his personal exile but he actually transforms his personal exile into the topoi of the traveling american even even uh, the exile of many people in america that that also becomes a subject of aga sahid's poetry that is why uh, aga sahid Uh, was respected even in USA, and he had settled there. Uh, in one of the interviews with uh, Stacy Chase, what he says is, 
One very good thing that happened to me by moving to Arizona, the Arizona is a place in USA where he used to live, was that I suddenly found a landscape that could somehow bear my concern and my themes. He actually find, found a sort of resemblance between Arizona and Kashmir and my themes of exile, loss, nostalgia, some of my political concerns as well. And that is why he is one step ahead of other poets, namely when we talk about uh, or when we had discussed uh, Ramanujan, we had seen that uh, the poet was not able to come out of this sense of loss. But here in Agas Ahidali, we find he actually likens in sense of loss with the sense of loss to some of the American people, especially in Arizona. And there he could find that not only was there a sort of resemblance, but then he could also find that he was actually trying uh, to smoothen his own wounds that he had received or his people had received. When uh, we come to the last collection, Rooms Are Never Finished, Rooms Are Never Finished, uh, which actually uh, came out in 2001. And uh, uh, this, this collection was also nominated for the National Book Award. This uh, collection is anchored in religious poetry ranging from Christianity, Hinduism, Islam, Jesus, Krishna, Hushan and Jainab. It is often said uh, that uh, Aga Sahid Ali was uh, very much uh, you know uh, close to and he had a sort of uh, very strong bonding with his mother and then mother used to tell her story, tell him stories uh, of different religions as well and that had actually got an imprint on the young poet's mind. So, in this he has also tried uh, Kanjon, we will we'll discuss what a Kanjon is. Uh, Kanjon is actually a poetic form which was developed in Italy and uh, Dante had written the first uh, Kanjon and Kanjon's uh, structure is quite completely different from uh, the normal uh, poems and all. Uh, so, uh, Aga had also tried uh, uh, Kanjon, but in this he actually uh, makes a sort of elegy, uh, he makes a, an elegy on his mother because he lost his mother uh, because of a very serious uh, disease. Uh, and, and then uh, this poem also has got a culmination of God, mysticism, longing, anxiety and death my dear friend. So, rooms are never finished, look at, look at this. Uh, one poem that uh, I would actually like to take up. Uh, from this collection, uh, which is very important, uh, because it was uh, uh, it was uh, one uh, uh, hospital named uh, Lenox Hall, which we shall discuss later. But before that, uh, let us uh, take one poem, which because we have been saying that he introduced Gazal to English literature, especially in America. And then, from rooms are never finished, we can take one Gazal and uh, look at some of the lines, because uh, this was dedicated to uh, James Merrill who had uh, influenced him too much and it was James Merrill who actually uh, influenced him and advised him uh, to take up a pattern and perhaps that was uh, the result uh, uh, which actually uh, prompted Aga uh, to start writing gajals also in English. I will do what I must if I am bald in real time, a refugee, I will be paroled in real time cool evidence cloud of like certs of hellfire, a former existence untold in real time. The one you would choose, were you led then by him? What longing, O oh Yar, is controlled in real time? So, at times he also brings uh, his uh, Indian words uh, uh, since he is uh, writing Ghazal. Each syllable sucked under waves of our earth, the funeral love comes to hold in real time. So, Gajal is always as you know that it is a, a two line uh, poem and, and then uh, it is mostly soaked in love. It may be love of the beloved, it may be love of the nation, it may be love of the friendship whatsoever. They left him alive so that he could be lonely, the god of small things is not consoled in real time. So, loneliness was also a pet theme for him because he had been living alone and after his mother's death he was left abandoned. Please afterwards empty my pockets of keys, it is hell in the city of gold in real time. God's angels again are for Saturn, for Lord. Salvation was bought out sin, sold in real time 
and who is the terrorist who the victim we all know if the country is polled in real time actually kashmir has uh, always been a very debatable uh, subject and the turmoil that has been going on in kashmir uh, that actually finds its reflection in one poem after another of uh, aga sahid ali and what he says behind a door mark danger are being unwound the prayers my friend had inscrawled in real time the throat of the rear view and sliding down it the street of farewells now unrolled in real time i heard the incessant dissolving of silk i felt my heart growing so old in real time her heart must be as where her body lies burned now a reference to mother her heart must be as where her body lies burned what hope lets your hands rake the cold in real time now friend the beloved has stolen your words read slowly the plot will unfold in real time so this was actually a poem uh, for uh, daniel hall uh, but then in the beginning of the poem uh, he actually takes uh, some lines uh, from james merrill a famous uh, poet feel the patient's heart pounding oh please this once and then i was uh, referring to kanjon which uh, uh, aga sahid ali had also uh, tried kanjon actually means an italian song as i told you and in italian france this was a practice the rhyme scheme usually varied it could have 20 lines it is actually more flexible than the sonnet but the kanjon is an ancestor of the sonnet as i told you earlier that it was uh, originated by italian poet date who could write only one because he found that it was just like loading himself with chain aga sahid ali also wrote uh, three kanjons namely after the august wedding in lahore pakistan the veiled suit which actually became a part of one of the anthologies of uh, us as well and the lenox hill we shall take some lines from the lenox hill because the lenox hill uh, has got its own place since it was a hospital lenox hill was a hospital where the poet's mother was admitted and the poet used to go and see his mother every now and then and there only he composed uh, this poem the hoon so loved the cry one falling elephants he wished to bear here it again he compares himself to another nomad like the hoons at down my mother heard in her hospital dream of elephants sirens wail through manhattan like elephants four stop peer panjals rock cliffs in kashmir again the mention of kashmir time and again the soldiers so ruled had rust the elephant the greatest of all footprints is the elephants said the buddha but not lifted from the universe we can find that he is not confined only to islam but he is also he has his eyes for uh, buddhist philosophy but not lifted from the universe those prints vanished forever into the universe though nomads still break news of those elephants as if it were just yesterday the air spread the die so this is actually a long poem and uh, by the time uh, the poem is complete you can be filled not only with a sense of frustration but with a sense of sympathy and with the sympathies of the poet's sense of loss now take for example the punishing khaki whereby the world siege us die out mourning you o massacred elephants months later in amrest she dreamed she was with diamonds being stoned to death i prayed if she must die so the mother was in such a pitiable condition that the poet time and again wanted the mother to die because that could only be a release and then in a dream like manner the poet says but there were times mother while you slept that i prayed sends let her die let her die not i swear by you that i wished you to die but to save you as you were young in song in kashmir so again he goes back to his old uh you days of youth when the mother used to tell him stories and then the poet says but seeing the mother in such a painful uh situation in in such a such a predicament uh, the poet says i wished if she should die and i one festival crowned krishna by you kashmir listening to my flute you never let gods die 
Thus I swear here and now not to forgive the universe that would let me get used to a universe without you. The sense of loss, I mean without you. And, and here uh, the, we, one can find parallel meanings, parallel references, not only to his own mother, but to his also motherland that is Kashmir. See, see alone was the universe, as she earned like a galaxy, her right not to die, defying the merciful of the universe, master of disease in the circle of traverse, of drug bound time. And where was the god of elephants, plump with fate? When task to task the universe died green, became ivory, then let the universe like paradise be considered a tomb. Mother, they asked me. So how is the writing? I answered, my mother is my poem. My mother is my poem. So by saying that my mother is my poem, he actually unveils another secret that his heart lies in Kashmir, his heart lies in his motherland. And the mother next to it. How did they expect? For no words sufficed except the promise fading of Kashmir and the cries that reached you from the cliffs of Kashmir in the hospital. Kashmir sees dying. How her breathing drowns out the universe as she sleeps in Amherst. Windows open on Kashmir. They are the fragile wood shrines so far away of Kashmir. And the loss of his mother that was actually very painful. And you know, as, as uh, the, the poem is already given, you can read it at your own leisure and pleasure. But I will simply underline some of the lines which are uh, very important. As you sit here by me, you are just like my mother, she tells me. I imagine her a bride in Kashmir, she is watching at the Regal, her first film with father. Now. There has been no actually running of the movies in Kashmir because of the trouble and the turmoil. And then the poet actually goes back and dreams that if he could actually remind her mother of the days when she used to go to watch a movie. If I could only gather you in my arms, mother, I would save you now, my daughter from God. The universe opens its leisure. I write, how helpless was God's mother. The poet actually becomes the mother and the mother becomes the poet. Do you hear what I once held back in one elephant's cry by his mother's bone? The beloved leaves one behind to die for compared to my grief for you. What are those of Kashmir and what are the grips of the universe when I remember you? beyond all accounting, O oh my mother. So there is actually a loss and this is not a loss of his own mother, but then this is also a loss of the Kashmir. This is also a loss of one land that was very close to him, but then the poet actually reveres in the reveries of the past and he also wants to offer to his ailing, dying mother once upon a time what Kashmir was and what he called the paradise on earth. Then comes uh, the country without post office uh, where I have already uh, told you that this also talks about the turmoil in Kashmir. And uh, this uh, collection is actually influenced by James Morrill. As I told you, James Morrill was another poet in America and he had influenced him very much. And here we can find Ken Jones, Sestinaj. Sestinaj is another form of poetry, especially in uh, Italy and in French, where you can find uh, that it can have six stanzas of six lines and then there can be a quatrain. And then there is another poetic form, uh, Villanelles, which also the poet used. In this collection, we can also find uh, the influence of Emily Dickinson. We all know that Emily Dickinson was also such a poet whose life was written not in nothing except pain and suffering. And he found a sort of resemblance with Emily Dickinson. And uh, Emily Dickinson had linked Amaris to Kashmir. I had already told you that there is a mention of Kashmir in the poems of Emily Dickinson and uh, that one can find. So, Emily Dickinson had been a major influence and as regards the influence of James uh, uh, Merrill, James Merrill, what uh, Aga Sahid Ali says is, I value him Im immensely as a presence in my work and I would say he is in some ways the formal spirit guiding me 
through the country without a post office. So, the country without a post office itself is symbolical of the trial and the tribulations of the Kashmiri people fine. And then when we have had uh, a detailed discussion on some of the major poems of Aga Sahid Ali, we can find that Sahid was uh, such a poet who actually tried to mend the fences and he wanted to falsify that even when you leave a country and you feel the pangs, but there also you can come across the same sort of pangs which can be felt by other people. And there was a sort of identification of his own pains with the pains of the people who were actually living in Arizona or in the part where he was living. So, when we have to estimate uh, him, I mean uh, Aga Sahid Ali as a poet, we can find that even uh, many important anthologists also have included some of the poems of Aga Sahid Ali in their poetic works. So, the veiled suit in Till I End My Song, a gathering of last poems, which was actually uh, done by uh, Harold Bloom. So, Bloom actually gave this poem uh, by Aga Sahid Ali uh, space in his work and he called this poem one of the most haunting of all last poems, all last poems. Even Aga Sahid Ali's uh, poem is included in Mehrotraj Oxford Anthology, fine. And then his works have been translated into many languages that actually gives us uh, a sort of stamp of what a sort of poet Aga Sahid Ali was. He transformed the painful spirit and he actually tried uh, to convert the predicament of Kashmir into art and, and you know the entire world looks at with on B uh, when we talk of Aga Sahid Ali. He is most often called as a voice of Kashmir in one essay after another we have found uh, such reflections. Uh, he is such a poet that even though uh, being a diasporic poet, he has actually created a niche even in America and that is why what he says is, I do not ever feel I have given anything up in India. So, India has not been given up, India is still there, India resides in him and he says in a strange way. I have recovered my roots as a South Asian, as an Indian, as a Kashmiri in a stronger way. So, what we find in Aga Sahid Ali that there is actually a sort of sense of loss, but this sense of loss also gets not only a sort of identification in the loss or in the pains of other people but then he actually tries to recover through their losses. So, finally, when we are going to make a proper assessment of this poet, we can take some of uh, the lines of uh, some of the uh, critics uh, and, and uh, these lines are very important. For example, Christopher Merrill, what he says is not only realistic, but what he gives is an eye opener for many of us. It was a genius to fuse the English and Urdu literary traditions. He knew paradise lost as intimately as the Quran, because he was uh, a student of English literature uh, and, and, and it is said that he knew paradise lost as much as he knew Quran. He was inspired alike by Dante and Faiz Ahmad Faiz. He had also translated Faiz Ahmad Faiz, uh, you all know that. Ali's voice is at once lyrical and fiercely disciplined, engaged and deeply inward. That is what Amitav Ghosh, the famous uh, uh, writer and uh, 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 the famous writer who also settled abroad. And then the centrality of loss, longing and death in Aga Sahid's poetry on Kashmir brings a relevance and immediacy to his readers which has led to his being referred to as the voice of Kashmir. We can also include the comments of Bruce King, who in his book Modern Indian English Poetry says, such writers are aware of, aware of a sort of consciousness is there and refer to distinct cultural traditions. Aga Sahid Ali 
uh, was a poet who had already heard about the independence movement and all and the problems in Kashmir and so he had a distinct cultural tradition yet imagine a universal condition shared by all cultures, races and times. Such universalism is formed by western liberalism. We here cannot say uh, that the east is east and the west is west and never the twain shall meet but here there is actually an attempt uh, to blend the two cultures. So, western liberalism rather then by say Islamic universalism as Ali is younger than Rasdi and as North American society is more fluid than British, there is in his writing less confusion about cultural identity, dislocation, anger, insult, humiliation, confrontation, resistance and all. So, we have already seen that the world of Aga Sahid Ali even though it is steeped in pain yet there is actually an attempt uh, to overcome the pain and pain can only be neutralized by pain and this we could have we, we have already witnessed while his identification with other people in Arizona and especially with many of the contemporary poets as well. So, before we come uh, to have uh, um, a close of this lecture, let me uh, also recite some of the lines and that also uh, from his own, I mean from Aga Sahid Sali where he says the poem is titled, I dream I return to Taxcon, fine. And what he says, below me is a world without footprints. We often say that our footprints are very important. But then he says, below me is a world without footprints, I am alone, I am still alone and there is no trace anywhere of the drowned. Those who have left us, we do not have any trace and there is no trace anywhere of the drowned. The sun is setting over what was once an ocean, the sun is setting over what was once an ocean. So, my dear friends, having discussed Aga Sahid Ali's poetry, especially diasporic poetry, we can all realize that the beautiful poems of Aga Sahid Ali will never set, but will always be on the rise and making us all aware that the entire world is a beautiful platform where all the cultures meet and this meeting we find in the beautiful world of none other than Aga Sahid Ali. Thank you very much for a patient listening and the next lecture we shall take up some other diasporic poet. Thank you.